Virtue Testing has launched a new weekly channel broadcasted every Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. It will be recorded and available on Virtue Testing Foundation's YouTube channel. So what is this weekly channel about? The channel will be dedicated to information security, weekly highlights picked out for you. We will also invite a speaker every week for a lightning talk. What is a lightning talk? Part of the answer is in the name. A lightning talk is a short presentation of a topic that will provide you key information within 50 to 20 minutes, kind of like lightning. I get the lightning thing now. Could I be a speaker and share about my malware analysis knowledge, for example? Absolutely. You can sign up by going to www dot speaker form dot virtue testing dot com if you don't want to be a speaker and would like to hear about a specific topic you can email us your suggestion to contact at virtue testing dot com that's great what if i have questions for the speaker or the community this channel is a place for that after the lightning talk 15 to 20 minutes will be saved to share and learn with the community if there's no time left for what you would like to talk about it could be a topic for another lightning talk i'm excited when is this starting? The first channel broadcast will be July 17 at 4 p.m. Pacific and every Friday ongoing. Sign up and tune in by visiting Virtually Testing Foundation LinkedIn page. My name is Victor Monga. I'm serving as Vice Chairman of the Board. For those of you who might be interested in learning more about me, please connect me over LinkedIn and or Twitter. Virtually Testing is a California incorporated organization. It's a 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit. That means all donations paid to VT are tax deductible. VT was founded on simple concepts like curiosity and community. We service three centers of excellence. Education is to offer the community to speak, collaborate, hands on learning and grow. This helps our community members to amplify their skills to advance their professional careers. Charity is to offer fiscal sponsorships to groups and missions who do not have non-profit legal status. We enable them so they can start accepting tax deductible donations without having to build and maintain non-profit legal status. Innovation is to work with our partners to crowd test new security platform integrations. We believe state of the art technology can and should be accessible by anyone. We build partnerships with other organizations to collaborate and enhance experience for our members. Welcome everyone to another week of Friday Information Security Channel. Today is July 31st, 2020. As always, agenda is pretty straightforward. We'll start with our weekly brief of information security news. From there, we'll have our lightning talk of TEFCON 28. Um, I have my dramatic sound for that. So, And the last is we're going to open it uh, to community for just Q&A, learn, share, anything you guys want to talk about it. So our call for speakers is open. If you or someone you know would like to be a speaker, it could be offline or on air. Please submit your uh, CFP at contact at virtuallytesting.com. If you or someone you know uh, would like to be a sponsor. So as you know, we are a nonprofit organization. So we, for operational cost, we do rely on our sponsors. So if you know a company or organization would like to sponsor us, please let us know once again, email contact at virtuallytesting.com. And an update on internship program. So we have extended the deadlines for accepting internship because of COVID-19. A um, lot of uh, fresh graduates or even transitioning, uh, they have not gotten jobs because of the they didn't get enough internship. So we have extended the de deadline. So if you or someone you know would like to be an intern with us, please let us know. Once again, email contact at virtuallytesting.com. We keep it really simple. Just put in the subject line that you would like to be a speaker, sponsor, volunteer, intern. And then based on that, we have a workflow. In our internship program, we do review your resume. We give you some feedback so you can look professional and uh, you can get a job faster. That's what our hope is. Also, we give you interview guidance. So we'll do some mock interviews, make sure that uh, you understand uh, what you're putting in your resume, uh, how that can be interpreted. And also we'll ask you some questions, either technical, non-technical, to make sure that you're ready for that. Also based on the technology you're putting on your resume, we also might be able to give you some hands-on. It could be as simple as that, hey, I've never installed a virtual server for ESXi. We can give you that guidance. Or it could be, I've never managed Google Suite uh, for, uh, for a company, we can give you that exposure. Please let us know, email contact at virtuetesting.com, that simple. With that, Michael, all yours. Thanks, uh, a little about myself. Uh, Michael Wiley, Director of Cybersecurity Services for Richie May Technology Solutions. 
Prior to joining the firm in 2018, I had a cyber security firm that I ran uh, here in Los Angeles. Um, I did a lot of red team engagements, penetration tests, social engineering, um, security architecture, that kind of stuff for clients in the financial and media entertainment industry. Uh, 2018, I sold my company to Richie May and now um, I work there. And uh, I primarily focus in the media entertainment industry. So I work with a lot of the different um, studios that make the films that we love. I'm also a former DOD contractor, I taught penetration testing and security courses for local bases. Um, volunteer for the Marines, uh, Marine Corps Cyber Vol uh, Volunteer Auxiliary Unit. And uh, I teach at local colleges and uh, I spend a lot of time doing uh, media entertainment assessments on behalf of studios. Uh, certification fanatic and constantly trying to put some more certs under my belt. So trying to figure out what the next one's going to be. Um, for our InfoSec news for the week, um, one thing that I saw was that uh, Emutet seems like it's gotten some upgrades. Um, from some of the stuff that I've seen is that uh, reports are showing Emutet, uh, well, traditionally would go through uh, files, I'm sorry, um, emails or subjects, bodies of, of emails, and they would try and spread that way. Um, what's happening more recently is that we're seeing Emutet within email uh, clients and webmail actually look into attachments and inject itself into email attachments. Also, uh, there's also reports that uh, VPN, um, there's some VPN solutions, seven of them that claim that they are no log VPN services, so they are not keeping any personal data. Well, 20 million user records were leaked um, containing personal information. So. Uh, if you are one of those people who use VPNs for personal solutions um, to try and keep private, you may want to uh, Google that and see which of those vendors ended up having that leak. And uh, if you are still considering using some type of um, private uh, browsing um, solution, you may want to look at uh, Tails, which was recently up late, uh, updated in the last week or two. Um, also. You may also want to consider looking at um, your own VPN solution. So I personally spun one up in AWS or Microsoft Azure, and you can generally create your own VPN solution within uh, your own cloud environment that you know is being logged or not logged um, and not having to worry about something like this for about the same cost as one of those paid VPN solutions. So something to look at. And then Victor, I think you've got the last one there. Yep. I actually had uh, uh, the third one as the new DDoS attack vectors that FBI just released, but I changed it last minute uh, uh, so that we can talk about it. So as you all know, Twitter hack occurred on uh, what July 15, and we talked about it in our show. Today, July 31st, US Attorney David Anderson has made an announcement that they have actually charged three individuals. So as you know, all know, Twitter headquarters is located in San Francisco, and that's why a U.S. attorney for Northern District of California is the one prosecuting for this crime. Um, I'll talk quickly about the three individuals. Uh, first one is Mason Shepard. Um, he goes by a handle of uh, Share One. He's 19, from UK, actually. Second is Nima Fazeli. He goes by handle of Rolex. He's 22 and uh, he's from Florida. And third is juvenile actually. So they're not releasing that information in the official government documents. However, there are some online threads have already revealed that information about him. Uh, according to WFLA, his name is Graham Clark. He's 17 years old and he's based out of Tampa. And he's supposedly the mastermind of this whole Twitter hack. Um, I'll add some links in the show notes and here in the chat as well, so you guys can read more about it. And all of that for $100,000 between the three of them, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right. So on to um, the main topic here, DEF CON 28 safe mode pre-show. So is DEF CON canceled this year? No? Well, kind of. So uh, DEF CON, right shortly after uh, B-Sides Las Vegas announced that they were going to uh, make DEF CON this year a virtual event, what they're calling um, safe mode. Um, and so obviously it's because due to COVID-19, even though Vegas seems to have somewhat reopened, they didn't want to take that risk and they wanted to keep everyone safe there. Um, I, for one, am thankful for that because someone who has been to DEF CON since the early teens um, I would not want to be crammed next to a bunch of people who are not showering, no offense. Um, so how can you attend DEF CON 28 this year? Well, I think this actually opens up a lot of opportunity for people who uh, have not been to DEF CON or haven't had the opportunity. It's a hot, busy week in Vegas um, every year in August for DEF CON. And I've got a lot of friends that wanted to go, but they didn't either have the, the money or their job wouldn't give them the time off 
Well, now is your opportunity to attend DEF CON. So DEF CON will be held via Discord. You can go to it at discord.io slash DC. Um, the official dates will be August 7th through the 9th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. However, on Thursday, uh, they will host DEF CON 101, which is essentially an orientation. I've only attended those uh, attended once, and obviously it was in person. Um, within that, so those of you who maybe have not been to DEF CON, there is DEF CON, DEF CON, which is the talks um, that are traditionally held in giant auditoriums with uh, thousands and thousands of people, and good luck if you get a seat in one of those talks. Um, those are the, the main stage events, if you will. Those are the ones where there are zero day vulnerabilities, uh, Jeeps are getting hacked, uh, governments getting hacked, cell towers are getting hacked. Those are the big zero day type vulnerabilities that you hear about on the news. Those are the main tracks. <clears throat> now, if you're not as familiar with DEF CON, there are also villages. There are different sub talks, that I'll call them side stage shows. You've got a village for all kinds of things. We'll get into to some of what those are, but those um, are not as clear as far as how DEF CON is going to um, handle that. So if you want to handle or go to the actual DEF CON talks, you're going to need to go to discord.io slash DC and register there. However, the villages, um, according to DEF CON's website, villages will have uh, up to 10 different sub channels within uh, Discord. However, from what I have seen and from some of the villages I'm talking at, um, they have their own channels outside of the discord.io slash DC. So you, if you are interested in one of the channels, maybe you're really interested in car hacking or the voting village, you may want to check their website for more details about whether or not they're going to be within the main DEF CON Discord or if they have their own discords outside of that. All times, uh, this was a bit of a confusion in the beginning, all times are now going to be in Pacific time, GMT minus seven. Traditionally, I think they mentioned it was going to be um, East Coast time, and then they modified that and realized it would make more sense since they're normally in Vegas to keep it on Pacific time. If you want to check out the schedule for the main talks within DEF CON, you can visit the link there or obviously Google it or just go to defcon.org. This does not include the village talks. This is one challenge that I've had over the years figuring out what I want to see and do at DEF CON is that this is the main stage. If you want to see other things relating to Blue Team Village or Biohacking Village or Voter Village or some other subtopic that's a niche, you're going to have to go to those villages and navigate your way and figure out their own schedule. Um, from what I saw in the FAQs within DEF CON, I submitted a workshop to DEF CON proper and I, we never heard back from them. Um, so I don't think that the workshops are still going to happen. However, their FAQs say they are going to happen, but I don't see the schedule for the actual workshop. So maybe someone else has more information and during the Q&A they can bring that up. I was hoping one of my colleagues who is a scheduling genius for DEF CON, he probably had the answer to that. Um, but I do just want to make sure that you're aware that um, there's multiple places to find schedules for the different types of talks and villages. I suggest if you are going to attend DEF CON uh, safe mode that you go ahead and get registered. You can do that today. You can get on the DEF CON Discord server and uh, start getting familiar with Discord if you're not, as well as the different channels. Um, it can be quite overwhelming, and especially if you haven't seen the scale of DEF CON in the past in an in-person event, seeing things like PHV-Packet-Inspector-Text, you're not going to know what that channel is, and it might get very confusing quickly. So um, I recommend getting in there, getting familiar, trying to figure out which channels are what, organize your schedule possibly in a spreadsheet to figure out where you need to be at what time. Um, one other thing I found out when I joined the Discord um, server was that within 10 minutes of registering, you need to um, accept the rules and conditions, otherwise you get essentially booted out of the server. So within that 10 minutes, there's a rule channel that you need to go ahead and accept the CAPTCHA, which will then open up um, the ability to use the rest of the Discord server. So don't let that screw you up last minute. Um, expect a lot of confusion around the different channels as I mentioned. Um, as well as where things are going to be. This is the first time being virtual for uh, DEF CON. In the past, the organization overall, I have not been a fan of it, so I expect it to be somewhat similar. Um, obviously, this is a hacking conference, so you know, they tend to be pretty good as far as um, security, but who knows if we're going to have DDoS issues or um, you know things are going to go down. We'll kind of see what happens. This is a first for everyone. Um, and as I mentioned, each village, if they are using the official Discord channel, they may have multiple sub channels. So you might see their PHB for packet hacking village. You might see a 
um, a workshop dash text. And that's probably going to be where you can chat with the instructor or the talker or the speaker. Um, and then there might be a regular uh, PHV workshop or PHV workshop dash voice. And that's how you listen to them talk. So you may need to be in multiple channels at the same time. Um, I've been in the packet hacking village um, technical walkthroughs and we're still working out some of the details as far as how all this is going to work. Um, so I do expect there to be some hiccups as we, we go through this, as well as just Again, get familiar early on with the different channels and where you need to be. Uh, last thing you want is a talk you're really interested in and you miss it just because you can't figure out where it is. Um, this is what it'll look like. As I mentioned, the CAPTCHA, as soon as you join the DEF CON server, you'll be thrown into the uh, the welcome section and you need to go ahead and, and look at the uh, code of conduct, accept the rules. And there's a, as you see, there's a limited amount of time to complete the recaptcha verification that you have um, you have agreed to the rules um, of the DEF CON server. So how do you get the most out of DEF CON this year? Well, it's, it's uh, first time virtual, so you're gonna make it your own. If you would have asked me this question last year of how to get the most out of DEF CON uh, in Vegas, I would have had a lot of advice from you um, going there every year for the last uh, decade and a half or so. But being that it's virtual, we're all gonna see what happens there. Um, talks can be watched later on on YouTube. So if you look at the uh, the talks proper, they are probably gonna be recorded and put on YouTube within the next six months. So I would personally take advantage of some of the villages or those off topic discussions that happen um, because a lot of times the villages may not be recording or you may not be able to see some of the workshops later. The instructors might not want those recorded. So those are a great opportunity of things that you cannot go watch later. I would do that during DEF CON weekend. Also, I'm a big fan of the villages. Um, a little bit biased since I'm speaking in a couple, but I like that they are niche focused. Um, sometimes you get people that are not famous hackers, but they have some good ideas and you get to uh, network and uh, be around people with like-minded interest, right? So if you're a blue teamer, there's a blue team village. If you're into cloud, there's a cloud village. Um, and then get into a workshop if you can. I know a lot of the villages have already sold out within eight minutes of, of posting the workshops online. Uh, but if there are any that have not done that yet, I know, for example, the Cloud Village is still getting the schedule up on the website, um, so they may not have been sold out yet. You are going to need to keep looking at the different websites and Twitter to figure out what village is doing what because it's not a central schedule and not a central way of doing things. Um, and then meet new people. It may be difficult to do that on Discord because you don't see a face, you don't see people's names. Um, people tend to be very private at DEF CON and not want to say where they work, what they do. Um, which is understandable and I expect that to happen with Discord. But when you have the opportunity to go on camera or um, voice and, and talk with some people and get to know them, I highly recommend that. That's one of my favorite parts of DEF CON is the happy hours, the, the dinners, the lunches, the breakfasts, the, the parties, those kind of things. And so hopefully it'll be somewhat of a similar experience here with Discord. So here's a list of the villages um, as of today that I saw on the DEF CON site. So if any of these speak to you, I recommend Googling DEF CON uh, biohacking or DEF CON car hacking village. Um, and you'll be able to see their own website or follow them on Twitter. That's probably one of the better ways to do it. And you should be able to find out what they are doing, how they're handling um, the transition to being virtual. Right, and speaking at, um, I'm speaking at the Red Team Village, Blue Team Village, Cloud Village, and the uh, packet hacking village and i can tell you they are all handled very differently by different volunteers and so some of them are going to be more organized some less organized some of them may not be doing things virtual some may be recording some may not so again the ones you're interested in go to their website follow them on twitter uh, see what they plan on doing for their village okay and then if this doesn't sound great to you and you really just want to go back to in person defcon they have announced that DEFCON 29 next year was scheduled for August 6th through 8th, 2021. Hotel blocks are already available. Um, as I mentioned, Vegas is, is somewhat reopened, so you can book your hotel for next year on pre-order. Maybe check the uh, cancellation policy in case we're still in lockdown at that point. Um, another fun thing I've been doing, it, trying to get everyone ready for DEF CON, it just doesn't feel the same as it normally does being in person. So what I've been doing is trying to post every day on Twitter and LinkedIn, some of my favorite talks over the past decade and a half that I've been attending DEF CON. And uh, these are three that if you've got time between now and DEF CON starting, I recommend you check it out. If we're not connected on LinkedIn or Twitter, let's, uh, let's connect. And you can see the different videos I'm posting each day, but I feel like, and I've heard back the feedback that 
Um, this has been psyching people up and getting them ready for DEF CON. Um, these are three of my personal favorites, uh, DEF CON talks. The first one uh, really opened my eyes in DEF CON 19 from printers to pwned. This talk um, I thought was gonna be a really boring talk, but basically a, a synopsis of what it is, is that gentleman um, talked about the vulnerabilities in network printers, which again, I thought I don't really care, but once they showed the impact of how insecure printers were and the information printer stored, whether it's all the documents you printed or most of the time, IT people were um, adding domain administrator credentials and these credentials are stored in sometimes clear text or very poorly obfuscated text. And you all of a sudden, now if you compromise a printer which has no security, you now have a domain administrator credential. So it was very eye-opening to why we need to protect printers and not forget about them as security professionals. Uh, the second one, DEF CON 22, I remember I almost skipped this talk. Sundays, I generally am worn out and I, I rarely attend a talk on Sunday. This was the last talk on Sunday of DEF CON 22. And uh, the gentlemen talk about elevator hacking. And again, one of those things I wasn't really excited about in the beginning, but after watching this, it was mind blowing about physical security and the things that they were able to do and bypass. And just some of the simplicity that um, I think we, most of us ignore on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, just one example is that they're talking about all the elevators within California have the same fire key. And that fire key basically overrides everything because it needs to bypass all the restrictions to all the different floors, time of day use, all that stuff because firefighters need to protect the building. So if you somehow are able to get a copy of one of those keys from a prior firefighter or online somewhere or many different ways of doing that, you could bypass all the physical security controls in elevators. Um, that was just one of many examples they talked about of how elevators are meant to go up and down regardless of the security controls you put in place they talk about some fun experiences they had where they broke into very secure government buildings and the uh the government was shocked and they said why are you shocked elevators go up and down to every single floor um, the third talk that i recommend you check out defcon 19 um, still everything kill everyone. It's not only entertaining, but very uh, interesting way of looking at um, offensive security. This gentleman is a, a blue team um, kind of guy, but uh, nights and weekends he puts on his bad hat and uh, does a lot of uh, penetration tests and uh, mostly around social engineering. And the guy is blunt. Um, he just walks into things and um, you know he'll talk to anyone, everyone, and it's it's a very entertaining, funny talk. I highly recommend that one as well. And Victor, I think you've got three talks you want to talk about. I want to go back to the comment where you made uh, in 2021. We'll still be in lockdown. What the heck, man? <laughs> well, I didn't say we will be. We might be. You never <laughs> know. They told us two weeks of uh, staying at home, and that was in March. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about the talks that I, I personally like uh, uh, from the DEF CON YouTube channel. So the first is uh, Hacking Your Career Through Social Engineering. It's by Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Long. First of all, she's an amazing person. Second, she's a cat lover. So if you, if you like cats, you're gonna love her talk. It talks about the people in our industry, especially the red teaming, hacking. You know, we have a persona where we have black hoodie and we are like really in, you know, kept in a dark room and we just like screens. There are some people like that as well, they're an introvert, which is completely fine, but they can leverage social engineering tools out there to recon, to get their way through the interviews, the person they're interviewing, how they can actually connect with them. So this is definitely, definitely encouraged that uh, to listen and also to make sure that uh, given the times, if you or someone you know has lost a job, this is a per perfect opportunity to look at how to do social engineering. Second is, again, the basics of social engineering. And uh, uh, this is from, um, I think, uh, by Chris. Why we are still talking about social engineering, I think uh, one of the reasons why we are talking about it because you pick up any threat intelligence report Social engineering is one of the key aspects when people are getting into the environment. So OSINT, right? Open Source Intelligence. That's how they get in. And what do they need to buy? What are the special uh, tools and tricks they have to buy? Actually, not a whole lot. As long as they have access to internet and uh, they're pretty smart with the Google search, that's all they have to do for um, social engineering. So this talk, definitely I like it. Um, it also talks about the penetration testing, how you could do it. And uh, if you like this kind of talks, you can also check it out, know before. Uh, so I'll put in the show notes right now. 
and also Trace Labs. And the last talk uh, that I have it here is uh, for Wi-Fi Portal. Um, why I liked it because I used to travel a lot before the whole uh, lockdown. My company was hating me because I used to buy that uh, internet in the plane so I can continue working and it's very expensive. Before this talk actually, Google uh, internet, if anyone knows Delta used to use it or they still use it, um, you could bypass it. So um, it's not exactly to learn how to bypass uh, plane internet, but it's to bypass how to uh, Wi-Fi security and that is very important because that is the main attack vector to get into your corporate network. So um, It's a very short video at minute. I think at 12 he's gonna get into live presentation or demo as well Which is very um, quick, but it's good eye-opener. Cool. And I think there's a, a theme there. We, we both picked a couple uh, social engineering ones. So um, That's great. And uh, there's plenty of video in that uh, still everything kill everyone um, cause total financial ruins um, I think that guy takes social engineering to the next level. So where, you know, this may, uh, Chris's video on the basics of social engineering might kind of introduce the topic. I think what was eye opening about um, the one that I referenced was that the guy takes it to another level. So he even talks about, um, he found someone's purse um, with her car keys sitting on a desk when he broke in. And so he grabbed it and he uh, hid in the back of their car with a fake gun. And when they came out, he scared the lady and said, you know, basically you're gonna print out everything. You're gonna give me your password. And um, they're like, that's horrible. You know, why would you, that's cruel. That's not in scope. He's like, no, but that's what, um, you know, a terrorist would do, or that's what a corporate espionage person would do, or that's what whatever. And it was kind of eye opening of how bad some of these little things like leaving a purse out unsecured um, might actually lead. So great talks. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, a couple of those that you put up there, Victor. Um, as far as other um, things, if a uh, shameless plug here, if you want to connect on Discord, you're kind of lost or um, have questions or whatnot, you can find me on the DEF CON Discord channel, the Mike Wiley number sign 3179. Um, and you'll be able to shoot me a message and uh, hopefully I'll be able to respond quickly. I've got a couple of different talks if you are interested in seeing them. I know some of the workshops are already sold out, um, but uh, Friday, um, I should have a talk on um, enumerating cloud file storage gems. If you were able to see the workshop that we had um, with Victor a, what, a month or two ago, um, somewhat similar, but this this takes kind of that content and shows from a red team perspective what you could find as well. Um, it's not just on the forensic side. So uh, if you already saw that one, you know maybe skip this one. Um, I've got my my famous Wireshark for instant response and threat hunting workshop that uh, both the blue team and Pack Attacking Village has accepted. Um, and then it's a two hour workshop of the cloud village, I believe is going to do the enumerating cloud file storage gems again, similar to that workshop we've already done here. And then, um, a new topic. I've only done this one once in January for an ISSA chapter. It was an all day workshop. We're going to try and do it at the blue team village for, I think it's an hour and a half or two hours. So we'll probably just get to the first lab or two, but it's a introduction to malware analysis and response. I love that, that workshop, but uh, I think it works well as a day or two day course. So it'll be a kind of a fire hose type of uh, short workshop. So hope to see you at some of those. And if you don't catch those, obviously a lot of stuff's going to be recorded. And I think we'd love to hear, um, you know, what, what you enjoyed out of uh, DEF CON 28 uh, safe mode. So uh, Victor, where can they leave some feedback afterwards and let us know what their highlights were? 